Welcome to the Illustrator Snowman. This is just going to be a quick little project so you can learn the basics of Illustrator and get familiarized with it. First up, you're going to open a new project. You can either do it manually by going to File New, or you can use the shortcut Control N or Command N if you're on Mac. Next up, you're going to go to where it says Profile and you're going to change that to Print. That's going to give you the right settings on the preset but you're going to go over where it says units and change that to inches next once you have the project open we're going to draw three circles you're going to go over to your ellipse tool if you don't see it look for the rectangle tool and right click it should pop up a menu that will give you a bunch of different shapes you can pick from pick the circle then you're going to go over to your canvas and just draw three ellipses. You can hold shift when you create them and that will make them perfect circles. Don't worry about aligning them perfectly right now. We'll do that in a sec with uh, another tool. Now, after you've got your three circles, go to your selection tool. The shortcut for that is V. It's going to be the black arrow up at the top. Select all three circles then go over to your align menu if you don't see it or can't find it you can go to window and hit align that'll pop right out for you once that menu opens up make sure you have all the same options that i do if you don't go up to the upper right hand corner here and hit show options that should give you anything that's hidden once that's all in order you go to where it says align to and change it to selection rather than page. Then you can click horizontal align center that should line up all your circles so that their centers are all in line. Then go back to the align to option and change that to key object. Make sure the bottom slash biggest circle is selected. It'll have a bold line around it. If it doesn't, you can just click on it now and it should go bold. Then, once you do that, there should be a little option at the bottom that says Vertical Distribute Space, and that should put them all up against each other. Now, I want to move my midsection down a little bit to create a bit of a layering effect, but if I do that, you'll see that it goes behind the bigger circle. What you can do to fix this is you right click and go to Arrange, and you can click Bring to Front, and that will send it to the front of the project. Working in Illustrator is a lot like working with paper dolls. The way you want it to look just depends on how you layer each sheet of paper. Then I'm going to modify my circles a bit just so they're not perfectly round. Because when you make a snowman it's not a perfect circle. So I'm just going to squish it down a bit. The way I do this is by going to the direct selection tool. That is going to be your white arrow and the shortcut for that is going to be A. What I'm grabbing are called anchor points and that's how shapes are made in this. This is how you get the vector shapes. It calculates angles and slopes rather than doing a pixel by pixel color. The white arrow tool is what lets you manipulate anchors and mess with their handles and whatnot. The selection tool that we used earlier just selects the object as a whole. It's like a moving tool. Next, I'm going to make the eye. I'm just going to use the ellipse tool again. And then I'm going to use my white arrow to deform it and give it a bit of a funky shape. To change the color of the pupil, I need to make sure I have it selected. And then I'm just going to go up to the top toolbar here. The first square will change the color of the inside of your shape. The second one will change your outline. I'm just going to pick a random swatch here for the inside of my pupil and leave the outline black. Now as I get into adding more details and whatnot, if I want to move the eye, I don't want to have to worry about making sure I select both the eyeball and the pupil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both right now and then I'm going to right click and hit group. The shortcut for this is going to be Control G or command G. Memorize this because this is going to be a shortcut that you're going to use a lot when you're using Illustrator. This will allow you to have assets with little itty bitty details in them 
but you won't have to worry about selecting all the details in one object when you go to move it. Now, no matter which shape I click on, it'll select both of them and I can just move them right over to the face here. I'm going to resize it a little bit now by using my selection tool just so it fits the head a little better. After that, I'm going to right click on the eye and then I'm going to go to Transform, Reflect. In the window that pops up, there's going to be a little check mark box in the lower left hand. You can click that and it'll give you a preview of what it's going to do to your object. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reflect it over the vertical line and then instead of hitting OK, I'm going to hit Copy so that way it'll make a copy but still leave the original unchanged. Next, you're going to select your Blob Brush tool. It should be one or two tools underneath your paintbrush. The shortcut for this is going to be Shift-B. Now, if you double click on the tool itself, it should pop up with a menu. This menu is how you would change the size of your brush. But also, if you go to that middle box in that size row and change it from fixed to pressure, it will enable print pressure for this tool. The downside of it is you'll have to go over to variation and make sure that that slider is pushed all the way to the max so that way the size there matches the size of the brush you're using. This basically controls how much pen pressure, how much wiggle room the tool has. And you'll have to change the variation setting manually every time you change the size of the brush. Now I'm just going to draw a hat. The way the blob brush differs from your regular paintbrush tool in Illustrator is that it creates shapes rather than lines. Your paintbrush tool is only going to create lines and it won't close the shape for you. This blob brush creates an enclosed shape that you can automatically fill with color. It will also, if you stop drawing and then go back over again, as long as it's the same color, it will merge the two together. My hat turned out a bit lumpy, so I'm going to use a combination of the pen tool, shortcut for that is P, and the white arrow to shape it up a bit. Under the pen tool, there are some different options that you can mess around with. One nice thing about this tool, though, is if you hover over anchor points or if you hover over a line and is it'll switch between the add anchor and the minus anchor. And remember for any of the tools that you'll be using if you hover over them or if you right click it'll show you what shortcut is listed for them so if you use a tool more often you can look at a shortcut and just memorize it. Handles are going to let you change the curve of a line at any anchor point. Now, if you want the handles to move independent of each other, or if you want to convert it into a sharp corner, you can use your Convert Anchor Point tool. The shortcut for that is Shift-C, and it's going to be located underneath the pen tool by right-clicking on it. Now find your eraser tool and either hold down or right click until you can select your knife tool. Then you can go over to the hat and draw where you want to divide it out. We're just going to divide it out so we can add a ribbon around the base here. What that has done is it's cut it up into separate shapes and that's just going to make it easier so I can change the color on this section, but I don't like the swatches, so I'm going to use the color picker for this part. The color picker is going to be on the right toolbar. It should be that very first tool. If you don't see it, just again go to window and find color or color picker. If you don't see the sliders, you can hit the button with an arrow and three lines and select show options like we did with the align menu. Now that I have the sliders, I can just mix them to pick what color I want. 
for this section of the hat. Now I'm just going to group it just to make it a little easier to manage, then resize it and move it so it fits my snowman. Now I'm going back to the blob brush tool and I'm going to draw my carrot nose. Then once I add a outline, I can then use my knife tool again and slice it up and I'll just automatically add those lines in it. Once I cut it up though, I'm going to group it so that way it's all one object and I don't have to worry about it flying off anywhere. Next, select your brush tool. This is different from the blob brush tool like I said earlier as in it creates lines not shapes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a mouth then I'm going to use the menus on the top toolbar and change my line property and use the white arrow to modify the shape a bit. Now I'm going to select the rectangle tool and modify it to make a scarf to wrap around the neck. I'm using the convert anchor point tool to change my sharp corners into rounded ones. The eyedropper tool, shortcut for that is I, will let you copy the attributes of one shape to another. This unfortunately doesn't apply to effects though, it just transfers things like color, outline, and whatnot. That will come in handy in a sec after we use the knife tool to create stripes and color them. Then I can group the scarf together and move it onto my snowman. Use the pen tool to create the end of your scarf and the knife tool to give it stripes. For the tassels, I'm just going to use the line segment tool. To duplicate something, you select the object and then you hold either Alt for PC or Option for Mac. Then when I go to drag the object, it'll create a replica of it. Once I have the scarf looking how I want it to look, I can then group it and add it to my snowman. If it's not fitting how I want it to look, I can again uh, use the arrange to send it backwards. The shortcut for that is going to be shift and your left bracket. Now I'm using the pen tool to make cold buttons, adding little details to help create a little depth here. Then I can add as many buttons as I want using that alt or option copy that I showed you earlier. Now I'm going to use my blob brush tool and I'm going to change the size so that way it's really thin and I can make twig arms for my snowman. Then once I have them looking how I want to, I can just move them over to my snowman and just right click, arrange, send it back. Or I can just hold down shift left bracket. Now you have a snowman and you can customize it however you want to.